Hi, I'm Susan Crumdike, and I am going to present the results of a piece of work that went on for um, over a month with a group of people that um, came together called the Insight Committee. Now, this committee had an applied social scientist who's also a um, management learning consultant, <laughs> um, uh, healthcare worker who works in local energy development as well, psychotherapist who brings inspiring transition together for social change, a military flight test pilot who also does quality management systems, a software and IT engineer, and a promoter of systems thinking at the Schumacher Institute. So this group took on the job of um, trying to chart the next steps for the convergence to a discipline. All right, um, what's the problem, <laughs> right? We always wanna start with a problem. Well, the problem could be seen not so much as that we haven't been thinking about sustainability or that we haven't um, understood the problems, but that we've been going in a lot of different directions when we do that. There's so many people who have been working on um, sustainable solutions, frameworks and tools. But if we look at the evidence right now of all of this good work, um, what we see is that business as usual has really absorbed ESG, um, sustainability standards, um, you know, it, it has absorbed all of this and the high risk traje trajectory continues. Hmm. So what we see is that the technological enterprise is quite happy with the project of rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic, but it, it just can't see the value in slowing down the speed and changing direction. That is the problem. The goal of the committee then was to figure out how would you create the capacity to have a compassionate and ecologically sustainable society. That seems like a valuable goal. And the action then to achieve that goal is to design a convergence of, pra of practice to create and massify an effective corrective transdiscipline. Um, a lot there to look at, but the, the corrective transdiscipline has to do the job of slowing down and changing direction. It has to be effective at doing that because it's needed by society um, and it has to be throughout all operations. So that's the, that's the massification. How would we create this? Well, here's, here's the rationale that, <clears throat> that the, um, the people to do it already exist. Let's just say that for the past 40 years, at least 10,000 engineers and peer professionals have understood the problems of unsustainability. Only, only 10,000. <laughs> if that's true, then enough people have heard the warnings to understand what um, that something needs to change. Now, if only 30% of those people have actually been um, working on sustainability, developing fundamental ideas, approaches, methods, tools, um, then we will have the lessons learned that we need. Now, when 10% of those active people, those champions, converge, they come together to define the discipline of correcting unsustainability, then we will correct the future trajectory. Because according to the, um, the theory of critical mass and diffusion of change theory in how social change happens, then that is how it works. You do have to have a start though. Somebody has to have a start. So if we believe that it's the convergence to, to design a discipline, then let's just take a moment to think about what we mean by discipline. What's a discipline? Well, according to the dictionary, discipline is a subject or a particular type of work. Doing things, that sounds good. A particular area of study, especially a subject studied at a college or university. When there's a department of transition engineering or when you can train up in those courses, 
then we will have achieved something. The ability to make yourself do something. So internal discipline, even if it's difficult so that you can achieve a goal. We all know that the work of actually changing the business as usual requires courage and it is not easy. The ability to control a mental activity. Well, that's interesting because the discipline of taking different perspectives on purpose that um, that is important in the practice and the discipline is the practice of making sure that people obey rules and standards. <laughs> well, that yeah, that's what disciplines do. All right. So why a transdisciplinary convergence? Well, professionals are needed by industry, government and society, and they are trusted because of their discipline. So a discipline is also where trust comes from. Practitioners who, who um, work in the field, they contribute experience-based knowledge from different perspectives back into the discipline. So if you have a discipline, you can, you can actually grow and get better at it. Um, researchers need that discipline as the, <clears throat> the definition of the work that they're doing so that they can contribute new discoveries and, and um, build new tools. And um, standards, rules, and codes of responsibility are written and enforced by professional organizations. So that's why discipline, that's what's going to work. All right, so the Insight Committee um, bought that. They struggled a little bit at first because they thought I was just asking them to, um, to define transition engineering, but no, it's really the, the overall discipline, whatever that might be called, um, just like all the other things that need to converge together, so does transition engineering. So the Insight Committee decided to start with um, the idea that corrective dis trans disciplines do emerge when a man-made disaster is bad enough that it triggers people to start looking at the corrective. So that, that's that lesson from history. And at this point, that requires then that unsustainability is an acceptable. Let that sink in for a minute, that we, we actually are getting to the point where the unsustainable future, these disasters just looming into the future of ocean acidification, loss of the coral reefs, you know, biodiversity crash. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Unsustainability is unacceptable. That's how it starts. All right, so the committee worked on facilitating reconsidering, and there's a word for that, which I learned, which is called metanoia, um, and then initiate the convergence of a critical mass so that 10% of the 30% of the people who've had awareness, it's about 300 people, actually, if you do the math, um, for, and then all the work will follow. All right, so the in order to do that, though, you have to have a place to start that is inarguable. All right, so that's your first principles and your purpose, the, the inarguable start. And that the committee talked about for a long time and arrived at life matters. That's indisputable. So it's not acceptable to diminish life for economic or political purposes. Just not. <laughs> survival is the prime objective, right? If life matters, then survival is what matters. Survival, equity, and autonomy in a thriving world define the purpose. So we're not talking about just survival in the matrix or something, right? We're, we're talking about in a thriving world. And then awareness of the ecological and biophysical constraints of sustainability is essential. You cannot figure out how to do that survival project in a thriving world if you don't understand the biophysical limits. So the committee was quite happy with that. When we now reflect on what transition engineering has been saying, what we see is that dealing with the, the, the dilemmas by thinking things through and applying the first principles, we actually come full circle because we've got that um, uh, local time frame for survival, which is safety. We've got the regional and group time uh, time frame and scale for for survival, which is security. And then we've got 
the continuous and long-term scale, um, which is survivability. And that includes other species and this, this whole thriving world idea that the um, whole systems and all living things. Okay, so the, the committee has done its work. It has presented these clear principles and, um, and purpose. And now building the transdiscipline, achieving the critical mass and defining the, um, the, what the discipline is. We are aware that the diaspora of sustainability is people who are very used to going it alone, pulling as hard as they can in their, you know, in their epic struggle um, in their own direction. So pulling all of these ideas and people together, we started working on uh, a kind of a logic, uh, logic model, a logic framework for where all these different things sit. So um, first principles, that's the bit we've been working on, and those might be ethical, um, thinking, um, uh, duty of care, and then the awareness, so the warning of the problem. So that's your that's your science right there, the, the awareness of the risks and the issues, and then education programs. We, we have to have those if we're going to have a discipline. Then stakeholder journey and um, that, that stakeholder engagement. And there's a lot of experience in that area, the natural step, the um, donut action labs, etc., and then thinking approaches to schooling ourselves for that internal discipline of how we go about the thinking. There's been a lot of work on that critical thinking, design thinking, systems thinking, um, circular, regenerative, reciprocative, uh, the list goes on. And then the processes and methods, this is where you start to deliver the actual changes. And that's where the um, the, the transition engineering and other engineering um, ideas have, uh, start to come in. And of course, then the tools to execute that, which is where the, the research really starts to be so important. All right, so the committee wound up with um, creating a cultural narrative of thriving, understanding and respecting values at all stages, social psychological processes, enable sense-making and change, prevent what's preventable, that's at the core, and start with the honest assessment of problems and solutions. Um, that looks like a place to start. <laughs>